Hi and welcome to HIV part two. First off, we will go into drug drug interactions. One important drug drug interaction to remember is ropiravine and that you should avoid PPI such as omeprazole with ropiravine. Avoid it completely. Statins obviously can also interact with HIV meds. Pravastatin and torvastatin are the preferred options if you must use a statin. They can also interact with rifampin and rifapentine. There are some exceptions of HIV meds that can be used with rifapentine, which we will go into later. And of course, the typical drug classes such as anticonvulsants, benzodiazepines, cardiac agents, antifungals, so on and so forth, can also interact with HIV meds. Now, when it comes to pregnancy, efavirenz is one drug that you will have to test a patient who has a potential of being pregnant when it comes to this medication, especially as it has shown teratogenicity. Now, whenever a woman is pregnant, she should be screened for HIV at a prenatal visit and also in her third trimester. If a woman has HIV and is pregnant, you could actually defer treatment in her first trimester, but um, by the time she's at labor, if her RNA copies are undetectable, she can undergo normal vaginal birth. However, if it is detectable, she will have to undergo a C-section. Now we will go into the preferred treatments for HIV, starting with the NRTI class. The two preferred agents are Epsicomp and Truvada. Epsicomp, again, remember, contains abacavir with lamuvidine and Truvada, tenofovir with emtricitabine. Now, some key things to remember with Epsicomp is anyone who has a HLA-B hypersensitivity definitely should not use Epsicomp because of the abacavir component in it. This is just a once-daily dose. And remember, Epsicomp in combination with raltegravir, efavirenz, or atazanavir, you want to make sure that the RNA copies are less than 100,000 per ml. Then for Truvada, it's also nice. It's a nice one-time daily, uh, one daily dose. But one thing you have to be careful with Truvada is renal toxicity because of the tenofovir component. Now, with the class of protease inhibitors, atazanavir and darunavir are the preferred options. Again, atazanavir is daily, but if you are pregnant and taking darunavir, you have to take it twice a day. Atazanavir has some good experience with pregnant women, but you do have to be careful of maternal hyperbilirubinemia. Then, under the integrase inhibitors, raltegravir is a preferred treatment. This is a BID dosing, so twice a day. But one thing that's nice about raltegravir is it has that fast viral reduction. Then, going into alternative treatments, following under the NRTI class, we have combivir. Combivir, again, is zyduvidine with lamuvidine. It has to be twice a day dosing. Because you have that zyduvidine component, you do have to be careful of bone marrow suppression, but this is a drug that has well experienced in pregnant patients. Then under protease inhibitors, we have Kaltra, also known as lopinavir with ritonavir. This one is also twice a day dosing, and when it comes to a woman in her third trimester of pregnancy, the dose has to be increased to actually three times a day. Then with the NNRTIs, um, the two drugs that are alternatives are efavirenz and Complera. Efavirenz, remember one thing that we have to be careful for is the teratogenicity. So um, a woman can actually take this eight weeks after she's pregnant. And then also postpartum, she should be on contraception to avoid pregnancy. Also because efavirenz is known for precipitating psychiatric illnesses, you must screen for antenatal and postpartum depression. Then we have Complera, which is just a once daily pill. It contains ropiravine. And remember with ropiravine, you wanna avoid any PPIs or antacids. And you also wanna be careful with ropiravine that the HIV RNA is not greater than 100,000 copies and your CD4 is not less than 200 cells. Then when it comes to infant antiretroviral prophylaxis, if a mother receives standard antiretroviral therapy, the neonate would only receive a four-week treatment of zyduvidine. Now, if she did not receive standard antiretroviral therapy, she would have to be on two drugs with zyduvidine for about six weeks with three doses of nevirapine within the first week of life. Now, the first dose will be given within 48 hours of birth. Second dose will be within 48 hours of the first dose and the third dose would be within 96 hours after the second dose. Then, if a mother is within labor and her RNA copies are greater than 1,000 or we don't know what her RNA is, then we can give her IV zyduvidine while she's in labor. 
So now when it comes to hepatitis B treatment, an important acronym to remember is called LET. LET, L means, stands for lumivudine, E for emtricitabine, and T for tenofovir. Now keep in mind, if a patient cannot use tenofovir or the prodrug version of tenofovir, they can use PEG interferon alpha as monotherapy for their hep B. Do not discontinue these drugs as it can precipitate more damage to your liver. Now, hepatitis C gets a bit more complicated. The usual antiretroviral treatment that we use for people who have hep C and HIV is usually rotigravir or an unboosted form of atazanavir. Now, the drugs that are most likely to interact with the hep C drugs are drugs that end in pervir. So this includes drugs like simprevir or grazoprevir. The drugs least likely to interact are drugs that are with a sofosbuvir combination. Stribolt, which is the combination with Elvitzgravir, Tenofovir, Emtricitabine, and such, interacts with a lot of hep-, hep C medication. So one should also be aware of, of that. Now, when it comes to tuberculosis, active TB, one should treat it immediately or as soon as possible. If their CD4 count is less than 50, they should treat within two weeks. If it's greater than 50, they should treat within eight weeks. With the rifamycins, rifabutin is actually the preferred um, treatment within tuberculosis treatment, but you should avoid it with the prodrug version of tenofovir. Do not use rifapentine. Now, the only exception where you can use rifapentine is if you're giving it with efavirenz or raltegravir. Now, with latent TB, TB, you can use any antiretroviral agent with isoniazid by itself. If you're going to use rifapentine, again, you can only use efavirenz or raltegravir but make sure it's in combination with either Epsicomp or Truvada. Lastly, we'll go over a few important points. Some black box warnings to keep in mind when it comes to the protease inhibitors. For instance, for ritonavir, ritonavir has a lot of interactions that can actually be life-threatening in individuals. And with tepranavir, you want to be careful of things like intracranial hemorrhage and also hepatotoxicity. Now, when it comes to bone density effects, always think tenofovir, or atazanavir and, du- and darunavir. Those are the drugs you always have to remember when it comes to bone density effects. Now, when it comes to kidney stones or jaundice, always think atazanavir, whether it's alone or in combination with ritonavir. Now, when it comes to nevirapine, you need to avoid it in women who have CD4 counts greater than 250 and in men greater than 400.